airplane twirl in the air? Well, it takes forces to get all of that done. It takes thrust. Thrust is what got that airplane in the air by the engine. Once it was in the air, it had lift. Lift is where the forces of the wind go over the wings and keep the airplane lifted in the sky. And then when they're ready to return, they let down the wheels and the force of drag begin to slow that airplane down. And of course, weight and gravity. Gravity is what brings the airplane back down to land safely. Meet Bessie Coleman, the first African-American woman to receive her pilot's license. She understood the principles of flight and she was able to do stunts, tricks, and entertain audience internationally and here in the United States. Bessie Coleman was born in, on January 26, 1892. She was born in a family of 13. Her family didn't have much, so they picked cotton just to survive. But as a child, Bessie learned to read, and as reading, her imagination grew. It grew and grew as she realized things that she wanted to do in life, besides pick cotton. As she grew older, as she graduated from high school, Betsy decided she wanted to go to college. But because her family did not have the money to send her, she worked hard doing laundry for other people. And with that money, she saved it. She saved enough money to go to college for one semester. But because she ran out of money, she had to stop. So she decided she was going to move to Chicago. During this time, it was the great migration for African American people to move from the South to the North. And she decided that she was going to move also. And when she moved, she got a job doing those fingernails, which we call a manicurist. As a manicurist, she became very skillful at her job. She always worked hard and was dedicated to the things that she was going to do. She worked extremely hard and she saved her money and she met many people during that time. At the same time, World War I occurred and during this time her brother served in World War I internationally. They were over in France and when they returned, they began to tell Betsy about women pilots but they also teased her. They told Betsy, you could never do this. Well, Betsy being the woman that she was, determination, hardworking and persistent, she decided, oh yes, I can do this. And so she applied for her pilot's license in the United States. Well, during this time, no one would accept her into their aviation program. And so Bessie was disheartened, but her friend told her, why don't you go to France and apply for pilot school there? Well, in order to do that, Bessie had to learn French in order to fill out that application. So she took a night class and learned French while she worked as a manicurist and she saved her money so that she could go to France. <laughs> French and saving enough money, in 1920, she got on a boat and she traveled to France and she was accepted into the Cauldron's Brothers Aviation School. There was she studied how to do spins and twirls and all sorts of stunts so that she could earn her pilot license. Then in 1921, Bessie Coleman became the first African-American woman to earn a pilot's license. Being excited, she decided she was going to return back to the United States and began to work in aviation. But 
disappointed when she returned because of race and gender, no one in the United States would hire her, nor would they sell her an airplane. So Betsy decided it was time to return back to France. Once she returned back to France, she began to study with Master Pollis, who had been in World War I, and they taught her everything about aviation and how to practice her skill and to become more professional at doing stunts, twirls, walking on the wings of the airplane, doing parachutes landing. And once she had done that, the people in the United States began to recognize her. In August 1922, Bessie was featured in the New York Times as one of the best Dutch and French aviators and as one of the leading airplane flyers of her time. Once she was back in the United States, she had another dream. Her dream was to open up her own aviation school for African Americans. In order to do that, she would have to raise money. So she began to do air shows for audience and to save her money. During this time, she had an accident and so she was sent behind. But because of her determination and persistence, she continued to do her air shows. She thrilled the audience, jumping out of parachutes, twirling that airplane, doing stunts and walking on the wings. Everyone appeared and showed up to see her doing her stunts and tricks. Bessie Coleman was number one at her game during this time. <laughs> Betsy was determined to open her flight school. She even opened a beauty parlor so that she could continue to raise money. She even wrote her sister in a letter and said, we have most of the revenue to open the aviation school for African Americans. She was set to attend a large aviation stunt show on May 1st, 1926 in Jacksonville, Florida. On April 30th, 1926, she and her mechanic, William, they went out to practice for this show. Unbeknown to them, there was a wrench located in the engine, and when they went up, the plane went down. Neither survived that accident. Did Bessie Coleman's dream come true? Yes, her dream did come true. In 1929, Lieutenant Powell established the Bessie Coleman Aero Club in Los Angeles, California. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. It takes determination, persistence, and hard work to have your dreams come true. In order to learn more about Bessie Coleman, you can look in the Scholastic News feature. It highlights Bessie Coleman, the first African-American pilot 100 years ago. Also, you can read about her in Black Women in Science by Dr. Pelham. I will leave a link below to both of these resources. Remember guys, you have what it takes. Go out and live your dream. Thank you and have a wonderful, great day.